Microsoft really don't understand finance people. How do I know that? Well, because in Excel, they call that the accounting number format. Hello, what accountant is using that as the number format? Well, the good news is in this video, we're looking at how we can create our own custom formats so that we can get the brackets and the decimal places and the alignment just right. So if you work in accounting and finance, then this is the video for you so that you can get your numbers to display exactly as you want them. So if you're ready, let's get started. All of the examples in this video use these as the values. So we have a positive value, a negative value, a zero value and right aligned text. Let's start by thinking about what's wrong with the accounting number format. Let's copy those cells and paste them there into column D. Then from the home menu in the number section, in the drop down, I'm going to select the accounting option. Now there's two big issues here. First of all, we have the negative symbol all the way there over on the left hand side. You could easily miss that negative symbol unless you were really looking for it. And actually accounting convention is that we would use brackets around a number to indicate that it is a negative number. Secondly, we have a currency symbol in every single row. If we were going to declare our units in a column, we would probably declare them in the column header. So therefore we wouldn't need a currency symbol in every single row, which means that for anyone working in accounting and finance, this format really isn't going to cut it for us. So let's move on and see what we can use instead. Right, now let's create our base number format. Now what I mean by base is that once we've got this, this will be the base from which we make all of our other customizations. So let's get this number right first and then everything else is just a customization to this. I'm going to start by selecting the cells, then in the number section, I can click on the drop down and select more number formats. I could also press control one to bring up this same dialog box. In the custom section, you can see we have a lot of default custom number formats already, but none of them are what we want. So we're going to create our own custom number format in the type box. Custom number formats have four sections. So section one is the default section. Section two is what's applied if we have a negative number. Section three is what's applied if we have a zero. And section four is what's applied to a text value. If we don't use section two, three or four, then the default from section one is automatically applied. But in our scenario here, we're going to use all of the sections. So our first number format code is what we want a positive number to look like. I'm going to enter hash comma hash hash naught. Now, what does this mean? Well, hash is an unforced digit. It means it will display a digit if there is one to display. Zero means it will always force a digit. So therefore, even if there's nothing to display, it will always show zero. Then the comma is the thousand separator. And you can see in the sample, we have the thousand separators applied every three digits. So that's our first section. We're going to come back to that and make a few changes in a moment's time. If we clicked OK on this number format, that format would be applied to positive, negative, zero and text but we want a specific format for negative numbers. So I'll enter a semicolon and we want our negative to be in brackets. So open bracket, hash, comma, hash, hash, naught, and then close the bracket. Now with number formats, we always want our numbers to be stacked on top of each other. So because a negative number has a closing bracket on the right hand side, we need to create some white space on our positive number format that is the equivalent size to a closed bracket. That means that the numbers will always stay perfectly aligned. So within our positive number format, I'm going to enter underscore and then close bracket. The underscore means create white space that is equivalent to the size of the following character. So by doing this, it means that our bracket will always be to the right of our numbers. Next, we want to declare the format if the value is zero. Well, in this case, let's say we want a dash and we also want some white space. So underscore and close bracket. So that means the dash we perfectly aligned under 
the rightmost number. We'll enter a semicolon. That then brings us on to the text section. We'll enter the at symbol to represent text. And let's suggest we also want some white space on the right hand side of that text. So underscore and then close bracket. Let's click OK to accept that. Fantastic, that is our new number format. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that our bracket is slightly out to the right of all the numbers and the dash and the text. And this is exactly the alignment that we want. So that's our base format. In the next section, we're going to look at how we can customize this so that it's perfect for every scenario that we face. OK, let's suggest that we want some decimal places included in our number format. Well, I'm going to select those values there and I'm just going to increase the number of decimal places. Now, that looks like it gives us a pretty good format. However, what's happening with our zero value? Well, that dash should really be underneath the whole number. It shouldn't be underneath the decimal place. So let's select those cells come back to our custom number formats. You'll see that Excel has already added the formats for each of those decimal places that we displayed, but that format isn't exactly what we want. So let's edit our format. We now need white space that is equivalent to, so underscore a period character, underscore zero, underscore zero. So our total white space will be equivalent to the size of a period zero, zero, and a closed bracket. Let's have a look at that. I'll click OK. Perfect. And now our dash is directly below the number seven. If we were creating a report that had numbers of this size, it's very unlikely that we would want to display all of those digits. We might decide instead to display this in thousands. So let's come back up to our custom number formats. And then to enter a number in thousands, we can place our thousand separator after our final digit. And you can see in the preview, it now says one, two, three, five. We'll click OK to display that. So now our underlying value is still exactly the same. However, it's now displaying in thousands. Now, what if we want to display that number in millions, but include a decimal? place. So it shows 1.2 million. Let's highlight those cells, come back to our custom number formats. So to display millions, we'll enter another comma in each of our positive and negative number formats. But if we want to display it to one decimal place after the last digit, but before the thousand separator, we can type period zero. And that's the same for the negative number format. We now need to change how our zero appears. So again, we need underscore period and then underscore zero. Let's click OK on that. Fantastic, our number is still the same underlying value, but it now just displays as 1.2 or negative 1.2, where it has the dash below that whole number digit. If we have a report which contains mixed units in the column, then we can't declare our unit of measure in the header. We might decide to include it in the row name, but in some circumstances, it's better to declare it with the value itself. Here you can see that we have 1.2, but 1.2 what? Well, let's add in a currency symbol and also an M to indicate that this is in millions. I'll select all those cells. I'll come to the custom number formats. So after the thousand separators, I'll type slash M. You can see in the sample that it now says 1.2 M. Let's add a currency symbol on there. Let's put this into British pounds. Let's perform the same for our negative number. And we also want to replicate this for our zero number, but we don't want to display the M. Instead, we want a space which is equivalent to an M, so underscore M and then I'll click OK. Fantastic. We now have our units of measure in there. You can see our unit of measure is inside our brackets. So it's 1.2 million as a negative number and our zero value. It's still aligned under that first whole digit. 
Some people like to show negative numbers as red to highlight that they are bad news. So I'll select my cells here. I'll come back to my custom number formats and to show numbers in red. At the start of my number format for the negative, I can open a square bracket and just type the word red and I'll close that square bracket. Excel has eight default colors available and you can see them on the screen now. We can also use a color from our theme palette. So for example, if I wanted to use the third color from my theme palette, I could type color and then enter the number three and that would pick up that third color. But for our scenario, we just want red. So I'll click OK on that and you can see 1.2 now displays in red. If we are displaying our values on a dashboard, then often we might use symbols rather than brackets to indicate what is positive or negative. How can we achieve that inside our number format? I'm going to select a cell over here, and then from the insert ribbon, I'll come across and select symbol. You might need to search through this symbol library to find the symbols that you want to use. I'm going to use up and down arrows. And then I'll click close to close the symbol library. I'm going to select that text, press control C to copy those characters. Next, I'll select the cells I want to change and then I'll come back to my custom number format. At the start of the format, I'm going to paste those symbols. So I've got the up arrow. Let me now move the down arrow. In this scenario, we are not using the brackets to indicate if something is negative. So therefore I can take away the brackets from my number format. I need to remove that from the zero and also from the text format. I also might decide to show another color for if something is positive. I might use green. Now I know for accessibility, red and green are not good options to use together. However, we do have that up and down arrow that will also indicate the direction of travel. So therefore, even if somebody is visually impaired and struggles to tell the difference between green and red, there is still a very clear indicator, which means they can understand the information that we have provided. I'll click OK on that. Fantastic, and now we have a direction of travel. So we can have positive 1.2, or negative 1.2. If that green looks a little bit too bright, you can always go in and use that color number from the color palette instead and find the perfect color that you want to use. Well, that's it. That's how we can create our perfect number formats. Now you might disagree with some of the formatting decisions that I made and that is absolutely fine. But by applying these techniques, hopefully you can create a format that is perfect for your scenario. If you like what we teach, then why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training program. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.